Welcome back to Robot Cantina. We pretty much have a double feature today, and this episode's a lot longer than normal. We recommend you pack lunch with your favorite beverages and pull up a chair. Things will get a little crazy, which is completely normal, and we recommend watching to the very end. Enjoy. Today we're going to take a break from working on our fuel-injected, supercharged, intercooled 420cc Hemi Big Block Street Legal Go-Kart, and instead I'm going to introduce you folks to our new project cars. Yep, that's right, I said cars as in more than one. Well, one of them is a real piece of crap, and I'll let you decide which one I'm referring to. The first car we're going to show you is a 1997 Saturn SC1 Coupe. The original Saturn S-Series cars were made from 1990 to 2002 in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and these were the only real Saturns. You know, at some point General Motors started putting Saturn badges on pretty much everything. The S-Series is the only true Saturn, and these cars were unique. Even though Saturn was a division of General Motors, there isn't much GM DNA in the original Saturn cars. The engines, the transmissions, the platform, they were Saturn only. One of the cool features of the S-Series car line was, except for the roof, all the body panels could be unbolted. The panels on the side of the car were made of some sort of lightweight plastic. So this car weighs in at just over 2,200 pounds. Now that's going to be about 500 pounds more than we really wanted in our project car. But Saturns are cheap and parts are a plenty. And that's cool because we have a hell of a time finding parts for the street legal go-kart. So yeah, this car is on the heavy side, but we can fix that. And since the body panels come off, we can even trim away some of the unnecessary steel away from the car. Now, don't get upset, but at some point we'll be sending this car to the scrapyard. It may take a year or so, but it's the end of the line for this car. So taking hunks of steel out of the car will be perfectly fine. The best part is, we can hack the car up, but leave enough material so the body panels still fit. We really want this car to look normal, so everything we'll do will be practically invisible. So let's take a better look at our new Saturn Coupe. So this car is getting on to 25 years old, and it has some issues. The previous owner had a very detailed list of what's wrong with the car, and we really appreciated that. The list was nice to look at, but it really didn't matter. You see, for our experiments, the car was perfect. First of all, it runs, which is a bonus because that's the least of our concerns. It has a 5-speed manual transmission, the tires are in decent shape, and it's a Saturn. As you can see with the skin peeled off, it's almost a different car. Now, we took the skin off just for this video. The lightweight body panels will definitely help with the aerodynamics, and we'll need all the help we can get. Not that it matters, but this car has a 1.9 liter single cam inline 4 cylinder engine. I think it makes about 100 horsepower, but on these single cam engines, they develop all the torque on the low end of the RPM scale, and that makes these engines very thrifty when it comes to fuel economy. This car was involved in a front end wreck about 20 years ago, and it has a salvage rebuilt title. The repair work that was done certainly held up, but at the same time the repair looks kind of crude. Again, stuff like this doesn't really matter. I think some of the welds will probably clean up and if necessary redo them. The doors on this car are fascinating to say the least. Now as crazy as this door looks, it's basically the same concept they used on the Pontiac Fiero back in the 80s. Stuff like this internal crash beam is heavy, but for the safety of the driver and the cameraman, stuff like this will not be modified. So let's talk about engine swaps. We have three choices for this car. The first one is a 722cc three-cylinder Kubota diesel. Now we really want to put this engine in the Honda Insight. Unfortunately right now, the transmission in the Insight has minor damage and we'll need to replace the transmission in order to install an engine with a normal clutch. So right now this engine's available. The next choice is the 670V twin swap. Now keep in mind, we'll be starting the 670 swap in the Honda Insight soon. Do we really want to do two 670 builds? I don't know. And the third choice is, we take a vertical shaft engine from a garden tractor and put it in the Saturn. Now a vertical shaft engine swap will be difficult to do, but it can be done. We were thinking about possibly using a Briggs & Stratton or whatever we can find that has two cylinders and makes over 20 horsepower. Now as most of you folks know, we got the Honda Insight up to 70 miles per hour with a 420cc Predator engine. We really had to cram a lot of parts under the hood of that little car and we're literally out of space. With the larger Saturn, we'll continue our quest to go as fast as possible and hopefully we'll have enough room under the hood. Having additional project cars also allows more time between episodes to make and film modifications. Alright, well that was the first project car. Let's take a look at our second project car. 
Yeah, it might not look it, but this car is a piece of shit. Well, she's a flood car and a total write-off. I got this beauty in a very sketchy deal, and I do have the paperwork for it, but damn. Anyway, the previous owner said it ran when it was parked. Um, yeah, I've heard that before. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Yep, it's an automatic. Now this may sound insane, and it probably is, but we want to do some experiments with the auto gearbox. And believe it or not, the Saturn has a simple and easy to work on automatic transmission, and we'll get into that in a later episode. Let's see what's under the hood. Mah, a single cam engine. Well, I kind of like these single cam engines, but it doesn't matter because we'll definitely be pulling this engine out. But first I want to see if the automatic transmission works. Now I have to admit, I've already looked this car over and noted some red flags. Oh, and they're plenty. So prior to bringing the car into the building, we had to clear out a huge rat's nest from under the hood, so this engine bay has been gone over to remove all the debris normally associated with rat's nests. Let me show you some of the red flags. So back by the firewall, we noticed the fuel lines have been chewed up, and we'll need to do a temporary fix eventually. For some reason, the EGR valve has been removed. So we'll need to do something about that, I reckon. Now this is strange, but the filter for the automatic transmission is completely missing. Now I can see someone snatching up the EGR valve for a spare part, but who takes a transmission filter? Oh yeah, these Saturn S-Series cars use a spin-on filter for the transmission. You know, I think all automatic transmissions should have this type of filter. So I think we can get this car running with no major investment, but we will have to throw in a few dollars to get a filter for the transmission. Before we put a battery in the car, I'm going to pull the fuel pump relay. That way we don't pump gasoline out of the severed fuel lines. So from what I'm told, this car has been underwater, but it does run. Eh, we'll see about that. Anyway, there's definitely some water damage on this relay. So the underwater part of the story may be true. But there ain't no way this car's run in a long time. Just in case we do get the engine to start, let's put a filter on that transmission. This filter was 9 bucks but I'd rather not clean up the huge mess if the transmission starts pumping out fluid. Like I said before, the spin-on type filter for this transmission is a great idea. Normally, you have to put the car on a lip, drop the transmission pan to replace the filter. I reckon when these cars were new, the average Joe could replace the transmission filter every year if he wanted to, and perhaps that would even help the transmission last a bit longer. Nowadays, good luck even checking the transmission fluid level. Dipsticks are a thing of the past. This battery came with the car and it was totally dead, but we were able to bring it back around with a charge. I'm not really too concerned about electrical fires when I connect the battery. It would be nice if we can get this car running to test the automatic transmission, but ultimately, this car will serve as a tool for mocking up all the parts we'll need to fabricate and test all the different engines. Of course, we'll be using the manual transmission that's already in the other car, and the automatic that's in this car will be for a future experiment. Probably a good idea to check the oil. Wow, this oil's clean, and it looks like there's plenty of it. Saturn S-Series cars do tend to burn a lot of oil, and if you keep enough oil in them, they'll pretty much last forever. Let's do a quick check of the dashboard lights. All right, great. So on modern cars, the check engine light is often ignored, and I'm sure this car has its problems, but here's the thing. In order for the check engine light to illuminate, the computer or ECU has to be working to some degree. So with that light on, we know the ECU has power and it commanded the check engine light to come on. This is called a bulb check and it confirms the light actually works. Now if that light didn't come on, then the bulb could be burned out or the ECU is damaged or it doesn't have power. In our case, we have a functional light and that's the first step. Now let's see if the starter works. And of course it don't. Well, after some digging, I found a suspicious switch under the dashboard. It's a momentary switch, and this is typically the type of switch someone would use to bypass the starter switch. Now, of course, it doesn't seem to do anything. I was able to locate one of the wires from the switch, and it looks like it goes into this fuse box. Now, electrical problems don't scare me, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on this car. 
Give me a moment and I'll have this sorted out. Well, that was easy. After a little more poking around, I found the other side of that wire from the starter bypass switch. I'm guessing whoever rigged this up wants this wire to go directly to the positive side of the battery. All right, no sparks, no smoke, no fire. Let's get a jumper wire and make a temporary connection. All right, give me a second, I'll flip the bypass switch. Okay, now all we need is some fuel. Eh, I guess we could fix the fuel lines, but that's too much effort right now. I reckon a shot of starting fluid would get the engine to fire off. But instead of starting fluid, I like to dip a rag in gasoline and hold it over the carburetor, or in this case, the throttle body. Yeah, I know it's dangerous, and a backfire will ignite the rag, but this is the way I roll. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. Not too bad. Looks like the ECU is working, and all we need to do now is repair the fuel lines. Well, a long story short, the fuel pump's no good. And on this car, the gas tank has to be removed to fiddle with the fuel pump, and we ain't doing that. Now, there is another solution, sort of, and it just might work. So, Luke over at the YouTube channel Thunderhead289 has been running a series of experiments, and more specifically, he put a lawnmower carburetor on his old school Ford Maverick with a 302 V8. Let's take a short peek at what he's doing. So I've been kind of fooling around and just doing something a little bit different. I've always wanted to try and put a lawnmower carburetor on a V8 engine with gas prices being ridiculous today, I wanna to see if this could be actually practical and even possible. Chokes on. Oh my God, it's gonna work. So yeah, he has that 302 running with a lawnmower carburetor and that's insane, or is it? I put a link in the description to Luke's channel, Thunderhead289, and if you find this sort of stuff fascinating, check it out. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but he took this to the next level, and it's not a hack job. This guy's a genius. Now, I ain't one to copy what other people do, but I say we give this a shot. I mean, a lawnmower carburetor on a fuel-injected engine? What could possibly go wrong? I'm kind of working on a deadline, and our choice is limited as far as carburetors go. We have a few to choose from. Uh, this is one of the carburetors from the 420 Predator engine, and this looks like another 420 carb. Now this one we picked up to try on the 420 but never got around to it. I believe this is from an 11 to 13 horsepower Tecumseh engine. What I liked about this carb was, it has an idle mixture adjustment and a high speed mixture adjustment. This might actually be a good upgrade to the carbureted version of the 420, but today we're going to use it on the Saturn. Let's pull the throttle body off the Saturn and see if we can grab the throttle body gasket to use as a pattern for our carburetor adopter. Let's take a minute and let me explain what is about to go down. This is the throttle body from the Saturn. Basically, it's just the throttle. It doesn't mix the fuel and there's no injectors attached to it. All it does is connect to the accelerator pedal, and when you push down on the gas, it opens up the throttle to let air into the engine. This throttle body has a throttle position sensor, and this thingy over here is to control the idle speed. Now, the idle speed thingy we don't really need, but the throttle position sensor, well, we don't need that either. But maybe the automatic transmission wants to have a look at that signal. Well, that's too bad, because it's beyond the scope of today's experiment, and we won't be connecting the throttle position sensor. The fuel injectors on this engine are located between the intake manifold and the cylinder head. Now in our case, the fuel pump's not working, so there's zero fuel getting to the injectors. The only way this engine has a chance of running is if we replace the throttle body with this carburetor. This carburetor will theoretically eliminate the need for the fuel injection system and all the fuel will get atomized in the carburetor. 
It's very old school. Now, this sort of backward shift in technology should work. It may not be ideal, but from what I've seen on Thunderhead's 289 channel, we have a fighting chance to get this engine running. You gotta love 3D printers. It took about an hour to design this and another four hours to print it. This adopter has provisions for an air bleed system, and as odd as this may sound, there's a good chance this carburetor setup may make the engine run rich. We'll use the air bleed hole to lean out the mixture if it becomes necessary. So we're going to attach this nipple to the air bleed hole, and I don't know, we'll figure that part out later. How's that for a plan? Let's bolt the carburetor up to the adapter and see how it looks. Now mind you, this is a prototype and it was printed in PLA plastic. In all likelihood, this adapter may not last very long because the PLA plastic has a low melting point, but it should be fine for proof of concept. So with the throttle body gasket matched up with the adapter, we can see how much smaller the throttle is on the lawnmower carburetor. Yeah, this is probably the best dumbest idea someone else ever had, if that makes any sense. Anyway, let's put this thingy on the engine. We're almost there, but before we can start the engine with the carburetor, we need to block off the missing EGR valve. We'll make a blocking plate by using the EGR gasket and some 6061 aluminum. Nope, unfortunately on this part we can't 3D print it. It ain't pretty, but it'll work. Keep in mind, the EGR valve was missing and that's why we're blocking it off. For this experiment, there's no reason to take the EGR valve off the engine. For a fuel tank, we'll be using one off a 212cc Predator engine. And we won't need a fuel pump because gravity will work in this application. Off camera, I rigged up the Lone Wolf 2000 remote starter switch to the starter bypass switch so we can fiddle with the throttle while cranking the engine over. You guys ready? I am. Bring the thunder! So far I'm impressed. Aside from adjusting the idle speed, the carburetor seems to be a perfect match for the Saturn engine. I reckon the ECU must be going bonkers trying to figure out what's going on. Poor guy. The throttle response is surprising. The engine's definitely not running lean. Let's try putting a transmission in gear. Unfortunately, without the throttle cable, I can only move the car while it's idling. The garage was getting a little smoky, so I backed the car out of the building.
Looks like the transmission has a leak of some sort. That's not good. The air bleed thingy makes a big difference at idle. Now, I'm not sure if this thing's helping or hurting. I'll try blocking it off and see what happens. The intake manifold's getting hot, but the 3D printed PLA adapter is staying cool for now. So I'm calling this a success as far as getting the engine run without the fuel injection system working. And to top it off, the car runs pretty damn good. We let the engine run for about 15 minutes to make sure the cooling system worked. I think the engine's probably in good condition. Too bad the rest of the car is in bad shape. Like I mentioned before, this is a flood car and it's been totaled by the insurance company. Anyway, the car was cheap and that's all that matters for what we're going to use it for. We knew it would happen. After we shut off the engine, the heat from the manifold melted the 3D printed adapter. And now it's FUBAR, but it served its purpose. I reckon we need to print another part with high temperature ASA plastic. All right, I can hear you folks screaming at your computer monitor or your telephone. I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> So we're going to take this project up a notch and make the car drivable. I mean, that's probably the best way to test the transmission anyway. So what we have here is a very low effort in designing a bunch of parts that will need to connect a Saturn accelerator cable to the lawnmower carburetor. Eh, it'll work, but it's not the best we can do. So this is obviously the carburetor adapter, and the ASA plastic it was printed in has a melting point close to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So it should be a lot gooder than the previous adapter. Now we made this thingy to reroute the throttle cables so it will line up with the carburetor. It'll mount on the brake master cylinder and, well, it'll work. This gizmo was printed in two parts and we'll need to screw it together. Sometimes it's necessary to split a part up in order to print it faster. Anyway, the smaller part will hold the throttle cable and allows an infinite amount of adjustment because we only took basic measurements. The carburetor will need an extension on the throttle in order to mate up with the Saturn accelerator cable, so that's what this thingy will do. We'll also have to drill some additional holes and use some tiny screws to attach this extension to the carburetor throttle. And finally, this part's how we're going to capture the throttle cable to the extension arm. You probably noticed a bunch of seemingly random holes. We don't actually know how much travel it'll take the accelerator pedal to open the carburetor wide open. So we added a bunch of throttle cable anchor points and we'll need to figure out what works best when we mount everything up in the car. I'm thinking we left a lot of room for adjustments and this system should work pretty good. Sketchy is the word of the day. Now, I'm too proud to use duct tape, so my go-to fix it all is zip ties and Velcro. Sort of the engineer's version of duct tape. Anyway, it's a bit sketchy, but the accelerator pedal's connected to the lawnmower carburetor. The fuel tank is carefully balanced on the roof. Now, duct tape would certainly be acceptable here, but there's nothing worse than getting gasoline on duct tape, so I'm going to pass on the tape. I say we do a quick drive around the parking lot, and see if the transmission's okay. Oh yeah, I did some adjusting and managed to get the carburetor to work without the air bleed system. I feel it may be running a bit on the rich side, but it should be fine for our excursion.
Well, right away I can tell the transmission's in the wrong gear. It feels like it's in third or fourth gear. For what it's worth, let's see what happens if we floor it. The automatic transmission has some issues. I'm going to go ahead and jack up the front wheels and see if the transmission will even shift. Yeah, the trans seems to be stuck in fourth gear. We tried this experiment with and without the throttle position sensor with the same results. I'll reckon we'll need to dig a little deeper, but that's a problem for another day. So this car is just for parts and we'll use it to prototype different engine combinations. But I really want to see how well this lawnmower carburetor affects performance. And well, the good news is the coupe has an identical engine and it's tagged, insured and fully operational. I think we need to put the lawnmower carburetor on the coupe and do some testing. This carburetor system can potentially damage the engine and the catalytic converter. Meh, the engine, I don't care. And the converter, well, <laughs> I don't care either. But we will put a wide man oxygen sensor on the coupe's engine so we can try to keep the air fuel mixture close to ideal as we can. It should be a fun experiment. I think that's all we have time for today. And if you made it this far into the video, you must have liked what you saw. If you would, please click on the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button. That would really help me out. You're not going to want to miss any of our future episodes. Until next time.